Vladimir was a farmer who always loved animals. As a boy in the countryside where he lived with his parents, he grew up next to chickens, pigs, sheep, and even a dairy cow. However, of all the animals that aroused the little boy's admiration, the horse took first place. And the reason for this fascination was precisely that on his farm, there had never been a horse because his parents said it was an expense they could not afford, and when they needed to go down to the village, they asked a neighbor to take them with them. Although automobiles had already arrived in the country, the region was still stuck in time. The roads that gave access to the fields were very irregular, and the peasants had to continue using horses as their main means of transportation. Vladimir's true love for horses, however, was sealed when he was a teenager. His father, who had always been in good health, suddenly became ill, and his mother feared the worst. Because of the sick man's health, it was impossible to move him to the city. It was then that the owner of the neighboring farm lent Vladimir his horse so that he could go to the town in search of a doctor. Despite his admiration for animals, the young man had never ridden a horse in his life but when he saddled the beast, it was as if he had been doing it his whole life. He reached the village without any problem, and there he found a doctor who agreed to go with him to the countryside to treat his father. The doctor managed to save his life, and Vladimir thanked him, but inside, he was convinced that the hero of that heroic deed was the horse. The years passed, Vladimir became a man and took over the management of the family farm, and he thought he had finally fulfilled his dream of owning his own horse. However, it was then that he understood his parents. Horses were still animals beyond his financial means, and he had to resign himself to continue using the beasts of the neighboring peasants every time they had to go down to the city. But with the passage of time, civilization began to arrive to those fields. Some main roads were conditioned for modern transportation, and little by little, horses were replaced by motorcycles. The price of animals became cheaper, and Vladimir was finally able to fulfill his childhood dream and buy a horse, which he named Geronimo. Vladimir and Jerome were best friends ever since. Vladimir was not ashamed to be the only one of the peasants in the region who still rode down to the city on the back of his unstable friend. Although people looked down on him because a horse was out of tune with the modern roads full of automobiles. Over the years, the authorities of that country regulated the transit of animals through the city, and Vladimir had a lot of problems with Jerome. Until finally he was warned that the animal would be taken away if he continued to take him down to the city. Vladimir resigned himself, could not go back down with the horse, and had to buy a motorcycle. But this did not end the close relationship between Vladimir and Geronimo, who remained the best of friends. More than two decades had passed since Vladimir bought Geronimo when the horse started to get sick. He was an old horse and did not give much more of himself. Vladimir, however, loved him and went to the city in search of the best veterinarian to try to save his life, because he refused to be left without the company of his invaluable friend. For a few days, Geronimo seemed to get better, but it was a false hope. In the end, it was useless. The horse was already very old, and there was nothing more to do. He died, and Vladimir was immersed in a sad loneliness that led him to promise never to buy another horse, for he did not believe that his heart could bear such a loss again. Life, however, had a great surprise in store for Vladimir. For five years, the man kept his promise to live in solitude and not to get a horse. But after this time, on his way back out of town, the man saw a wounded horse halfway down the road. It had been abandoned there by its owner, which was becoming a common practice. When horses were no longer worth as much as they used to be, when sick or injured, they were immediately abandoned by their owners. There was no promise that could harden Vladimir's heart, and he was not able to leave the animal lying there. He gave the horse first aid, and once he managed to get it to walk, he slowly took it with him to his field. As the days went by, a feeling began to develop inside Vladimir that, for fear of being accused of going mad, he did not dare to share with anyone. But the truth is that Vladimir felt that the animal had the same spirit as Geronimo. He behaved just like his old horse and responded in the same way to his caresses, so Vladimir did not hesitate twice to name him Geronimo. 
The joy of having a new friend did not erase Vladimir's fears of having to experience the loss of his animal friend again. He was afraid to go through the pain again, to go through the ordeal of becoming attached to a horse for years, and finally to suffer the loss of him by seeing him die. But he decided to take the risk because Geronimo had given him a second youth, making him once again a happy man with a zest for life. Unfortunately, the fate of those two friends would be the complete opposite of what Vladimir had feared. Geronimo was still in good health when his owner began to fall ill at an accelerated rate due to his old age. The master's love for his animal was so great that what worried him was not to die, but to leave his faithful friend alone when he was gone. Who would take care of feeding Geronimo and giving him the love he deserved? Vladimir did not have the time to entrust his horse to someone else. His death came in a matter of days. The loud neighing of Geronimo lamenting the death of his master alerted the other peasants. They, who held Vladimir in high esteem, took it upon themselves to organize a burial for him in the city, leaving all expenses paid. And when Vladimir's body was moved, they were forced to padlock Geronimo in the stable because the animal was desperately whinnying and they could not calm him down in any way. To everyone's surprise, in the middle of the funeral, Geronimo appeared in the streets of the city, making his way through the crowd until he reached the side of the coffin where the body of his master rested. The horse leaned on the coffin and tears began to flow from his eyes that moved those present. Everyone was impressed with that show of love for his master. The padlock with which they had locked the animal was very strong, but Geronimo's loyalty to Vladimir had been even stronger, so much so that he managed to break the stable door and leave the countryside to reach the city, meet his master, and say his last goodbye. From heaven, Vladimir could see with peace of mind that Geronimo was not abandoned as he had feared in life. The other peasants of the region, moved by what they saw, took care of Geronimo from then on, making sure that he lacked nothing and that he could live happily the last days of his life. When the horse died, the peasants moved heaven and earth to obtain permission to bury him right next to Vladimir's grave, so that he could rest for eternity next to his master. On his grave, the peasants carved a touching epitaph that will inform posterity about that beautiful love story. The epitaph read, Here lie two unconditional friends, capable of loving as a strength and an intensity that is proof against all obstacles. Although everyone says that a dog is man's best friend, Geronimo, being a horse, knew how to show for Vladimir a self-sacrificing fidelity that followed him even beyond death. For all this, today both friends rest side by side, keeping each other company even in the afterlife. The grave quickly became a symbol of the city and a tourist site visited every year by hundreds of tourists from that country, interested in knowing the love story between a horse and a man who loved each other with their souls, demonstrating that friendship knows no boundaries, but that their feelings for whose existence the only thing is needed is the will to be with each other through thick and thin. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it and leave your opinion in the comments box. Subscribe for more stories like this one and share it with your friends and family.